Poller, if you hear me, and welcome to this edition of Luke Targets, because the world of Broadway musicals has always been a really big, popular thing in the world of New York City. And although, remember, when it comes to unlike the movie theaters, when you go out to the theater in Broadway, you pretty much have that being the major epicenter. And because it's, you know, live with people right there, theoretical people in flesh and blood on the stage, that means you can have them go all over the country or all around the world to get a big, wide release. So that's one, one major disadvantage of the theater versus the movie theater. But of course, also when you get a movie theater production, a musical production that is so damn large, even if it is based on a pre-existing film or pre-existing property, then you wind up with the strange uh, inbreeding of getting a musical that's a big hit based on a movie, and then you wind up getting a new movie based on that musical of that movie. It's happened with the producers, it happened with, of course, the biggest uh, Broadway hit of all time, The Phantom of the Opera, and now it's happening again with Wicked, where Wicked, the play that pretty much was a you know patient zero for taking a classic property and filling it all with a bunch of woke garbage and also with trying to take that oh this great this horrifying villain is really just a misunderstood badass and she was a great brilliant rebel but it's you know e e evil pretty women that were you know prettier than her and, and everybody liked her more than this girl who's actually smarter and better but she was ugly and also that patriarchy Basically, a whole lot of cope dressed up in some nice songs with Stephen Schwartz lyrics attached to them. Basically, that's what the play was. No wonder when Lindsay Ellis did her old big retrospective on the Wicked Witch of the West, she, of course, practically was fainting. And no, not fainting just from going more than five minutes without alcohol. She was fainting from multiples at the sight of getting to talk about Wicked. And then uh, watch that flip into the weirdly personal anger towards uh, the uh, Oz the Great and Powerful. And well, 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 you've got a movie now of the movie of a Wicked where the Wicked Witch of the West is now, of course, being played by a bald black lady who seems to have the acting range and singing range of a paper football. And well, if anything, this might be another one of those examples of a movie like the Barbie movie that is going out of its way to be blindingly woke that it winds up becoming unintentionally based by comparison where you're rooting and the movie feels like the real hero, the real Disney princess kind of story of wanting more and going out into the world is with Ryan Gosling's Oscar-nominated performance as Ken. While Margot Robbie once again was, you know, stuck there with her with her legs down, or legs wide open more likely, proving that the only time she can ever be in a movie that makes money is when she's there to look good in sexy outfits while actually established men go out there and do all the real acting for her. E.g. the film where she literally spread her legs for stardom, or Suicide Squad, or Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And well, those are a few more successful movies that are going to be to her name than we're ever going to see with Ariana Grande or with whoever this sentient uh, melanin count with a septum ring passing off as an actress is going to be since one thing about the Wicked musical is that it has been around for a, a good long while, a few decades or so. I mean, it's a Broadway show that's been going and going, so of course it's going to have a really well-established fan base. And what were people doing to the teaser poster with uh, Ariana Grande there as Glenda with her as the Wicked Witch? And, well, they wound up somebody online photoshopping the poster to make it look more like the original poster for when the musical first started back in the early 2000s. And, well, 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 now this entitled little lady who take the average sense of egotism and entitlement and the need to constantly being told that they're great of uh an actor's fragile little mind in, in general, and then you combine it with modern social justice dogma, and you wind up with somebody to whom is lashing out at the fans of a Broadway musical. I'm pretty sure that the Broadway musical's major audience of a bunch of affluent white women and their henpecked husbands and an awful lot of gay dudes are not going to be uh, the kind of people that are throwing women off rooftops or are voting Republican and wearing big red hats and singing along to Kid Rock songs, okay? I'm pretty sure that maybe if you get uh, those women that, you know, spend saving a decade plus of their wages or their money, them and their husbands to go and spend, you know, maybe a weekend in New York City to go see a big musical. Well, though, of course, now with the Biden-Harris economy, that's now been about as possible as being able to Kamala Harris to admit that she didn't grow up middle class, but that she grew up in a two-story mansion in Canada with a college professor daddy who loved Karl Marx almost as much as she does, right down to quoting Karl Marx with saying unburdened by what has been. But with every single one of these accounts of some idiotic actor or some moron on the internet, and whenever they try to go and lash out at people for daring to do something that tampers with their ego and their sense of social justice entitlement, 
what it really boils down to is a fatal lack of knowledge. You know, Harlan Ellison was a major left-wing nutcase who had the violent temper where he punched out an ABC executive for telling him that writers are toadies and do as they're told. And he also punched unconscious his Ohio State college professor for telling him he had no writing talent, then got expelled. But he was correct in one quote he said where uh, him having an addendum to the concept of everyone's entitled to their opinion, he said you're entitled to an informed opinion. If your opinion is not informed on anything, you do not matter. Your opinion is meaningless. And much like with this actress who clearly wouldn't know The Wizard of Oz from a wristwatch, clearly is the worst actress on earth for this kind of part. I know that the big star, Glenda on the Broadway musical now, is very much well past the age range of any, you know, Hollywood producer that want to put her in the movie in exchange for forcing themselves on her. While Ariana Grande, on the other hand, who her suspicious upbringing in Hollywood under the Dan Schneider regime at Nickelodeon, and whose singing is actually better when she's impersonating other established singers than her own quote-unquote singing voice, well, at least there is some attempt at having some kind of crowd considering that she's supposed to be a theoretical pop star, as opposed to Mabutu ala Gububububu with a shaved head and the ring that makes her just look like the Chicago Bulls logo put on blackface and got rid of the horns. If anything, hell, Dennis Rodman would probably have been a better casting choice for the Wicked Witch than her, considering that, well, Rodman also probably has a lot of other people involved in Hollywood that are okay with him these days, since he doesn't mind cozying up to socialist dictators just like Gavin Newsom. But remember, this is modern Hollywood. Even a studio that does make films that are actually popular and successful that don't cater to the modern audiences, like this being a Universal release, and Universal, who's been doing the Fast and the Furious franchise over and over that's been very successful, and went and made the Super Mario Brothers movie, not a woke nightmare, and it got them a billion dollar box office bonanza and a whole new flood of Nintendo merchandising and theme park attractions and subsequent Nintendo adaptations to make. But they're still making this where we gotta go race swap of play a Broadway musical that already is full of, like I said, patient zero of all the crap that Disney has been doing with trying to make every horrifying female villain into just a misunderstood girl boss. And well, let's just say the Universal is gonna have to answer to a lot of financial bosses when this movie tanks so damn hard in competition with a cartoon hedgehog voiced by John Raphael from Parks and Recreation and another cartoon hedgehog voiced by that guy from Booking.com commercial and another cartoon hedgehog voiced by John Wick. And it's not my opinion, I know I'm right. So I want to thank you for watching, subscribe so my channel hits 10,000 subs, become a channel member today, and shop my art store at the second link below, where you can buy the art, or you can commission me, or you can show your direct support with a donation in the store. And if you want to buy or commission me to live outside of America, make your payment as a donation with another donation for the international shipping fee. So until then, beelines, slam it, lick it, suck it, and see you, Space Cowboy.